Hello, everybody. Thank you for stopping by. This is Cheryl. And I um, had gotten a lot of requests when I put up a snippet of this prayer journal um, as to how I made it. And um, so I just thought that I would do a quick flip through of it and then show you how I um, made it. It's very cushy and very soft. And um, I'll show you the reason why. Um, so it just opens up like this. It's not very big. It's, um, I think it's pretty much the reg uh, the size of a regular traveler's notebook. So it is um, opened up. It is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, um, that's how I made it. And so, um, when you flip it open, it's got, um, I had just put, um, some embossed paper and, um, lined it with this wallpaper, um, pattern that I have. It's digital. It's not real wallpaper. And I do not remember who it's by. Likely Ruby and Pearl, but, um... I'm not printing any digitals this month. I'm just using what's in my stash. So, um, yeah. So, let me start with the front. The front is just a prayer card um, digital that a friend of mine had gifted me. And, um, oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. This one is off of a Christmas digital that I have of ruby and pearls. Um, and then I just put, like, a little pink bow up here. And I, um, you know, collaged it, and then, you know, I placed her on that and then placed that on the cover. It's got one signature here. If you open it up, you'll see that I've layered it with some um, antique fabric that I had, uh, cotton fabric that came off of an antique um, pantaloons, actually. And then I've got some lace up here. Um, and then under here, I've got another uh, antique lace. And then here, I just um, sewed on a few little sequins. Am I in frame? Oh, and then in here, um, you know, I sewed, you know, just a few little sequins, which, you know, don't really show up, but but they kind of do. And I just, I don't know, I just thought that, that would look kind of pretty under there. And um, you can see how... Um, that's how I did the cover. And again, I decoupage this. This is again another part of that digital of, um, it's actually one whole sheet and I just cut it up. It's a Christmas um, digital collage from Ruby and Pearl. And then um, as you can see, I just collaged both um, pieces and then, you know, placed the card on and then collaged over it with some embossed newsprint and um, embossed, I think that's tea stain paper. I have a lot of embossed paper that I don't throw away and then some French script and some more little embossed pieces here and here. And then up here is another different printed wallpaper that I did like up here to cover what I used for the base. So that's all that I did. And then um, once I had this all on, um, this lace on this here, I sewed on afterwards. So I basically built the whole thing first and then I sewed um, the eyelet lace on the sides afterwards to, um, to be able to close it, which there was plenty of room to do that. And this was just a project that I did with scraps and something that I thought of. Actually, I had a dream about it. <laughs> and I woke up in the morning and I came into my craft room and I made it in like an hour and a half with just what was, you know, next to me in my little letter um, holder that I keep my um, digitals that I haven't used yet or, or what have you. So let me just flip through it. Um, so 
Um, here is a piece of embossed paper and it's eight and a half by 11 embossed. And you have to kind of emboss it, or at least I do, because it's a very old embossing folder. This is called um, vintage wallpaper. And I don't think you can get it anymore because it's like 10 years old. I mean, you might be able to get it on eBay or something, but um, you could use any embossing folder. So um, this is just on copy paper, embossed on copy paper. I usually just emboss on copy paper because if I emboss on anything stronger than copy paper, it uh, cracks. So, and then I lined it with this particular wallpaper um, on this side. It's very eclectic. <laughs> As you can see, it's lots of pieces that I had because I'm not printing. I have lots to print. I'm doing a um, Christmas in July um, collaboration with Terry S. Lee and um, Lisa Fisher from um, Lisa's Bling. Um, anyway, I'll be talking about that later. But anyway, so then you just open it up and... Um, I had this really nice picture and I have no idea where I got it from or if it was from a kit or on a kit. But anyway, I have it. I'm sure it was in a kit at some point, somewhere down the line. I have a, um, I have a file um, and I keep like all my pinks and all my girls and all my boys and all my Christmas and all my fall in. And then I just pull from that and then put in my tray and then, you know, work from that. So um, with fall coming up and Christmas in July and there's also a, um, there's also a junk journal July and there is Rachel and Bella. They, uh, Rachel and Sarah started another six month continuation of theirs so um their um stitchery so I want to be able to do some of that as well so I'm just trying to save ink and you know back off a little bit so um and I just you know I just don't want to waste any of these things so in any event it just says we walk by faith and not by sight and it's just you know a print of that really pretty um girl there and then here I have this sweet little girl. She's got a little doll here and so like a little light blue bow that I um, highlighted in and some pink and it says the spirit of God has made me and then I just backed it and sewed it um, on and then you know just collaged it basically that's all I did. So and then I had this little strip of um of um embroidered um, piece of like netting so I made a little tuck for that there and I keep it in um, I have a little bag of fabric but I also have some jars on my desk and I keep little bits and pieces in here for things like this so so I always have these close by so that I have something to, you know, add. And then um, this is just blank. And then in this little pocket, I have another card. And this, again, is from that same digital um, collage. I just cut out this part. And um, I just put, I am a child of God. And I backed it on some, it looks like some avocado stained lace paper. And then some, I think that's cardstock. It is. And then I sewed around it. You don't have to sew it. It's just something that I like to do. I like to sew around my cards. And then here, I printed on newsprint. And this is um, just some receipts that I had printed. And um, I like to print on newsprint because you can write on it. Plus, you don't have to cut it up if you don't want to when it's not white and it's very lightweight. And if you are looking for newsprint to print on, um, I highly recommend it. It's great to write on. Um, 
I'm going to add a writing board to this, which is simply doing this. I won't put any stitching in it, but then a person can put it underneath and write on it. So I just haven't added that yet. I haven't put that in there yet. So you just open that up and it's got, you know, plenty of space to write if you want or whatever. And then some writing space here. And this looks like a piece of um, something I didn't use. Again, this is printed on newsprint. And you can get, I think it's 800 sheets of $5 on Amazon. And it's 8.5 by 11. And I have an inkjet um, photo printer. Nothing expensive or fancy. And it pulls the paper through with no problem. So... I mean, I don't put a whole stack in and run 50 pages. I'll do, you know, three or four. Again, another page. And then this kind of flips out because it was extra room. And I didn't even bother cutting off the edges because it's kind of a gray color anyway. So I must have... Um, attach that to something on the other side. So as you can see, it's got a lot of flips. And then another piece of, it must have been a piece of this that I had left over and didn't want to throw away, of course. So I just made a little tuck spot and um, I'm pretty sure this is from my porch prints and it's, um, it's their, um, I can't remember the name of the kit, but it is, um, it's not prayer cards. It might just be Bible scripture cards or something like that. And um, I just fussy cut it out and then I added, you know, just a little piece of uh, chiffon and then this butterfly and I put a little bit of, um, you know me and my stickles. So I just put a little stickles on the butterfly. And then some tea stain lace paper on the back. And that sticks right in there. And then another French letter I have that I don't, I don't, um, <laughs> I still scan them. I don't, I, I, I don't have that many. I only have like probably 15 of them. And I just can't bear to, um, you know, to write, to cut them out. So this is actually printed on some parchment paper that I have. So this is the color of the paper. Um, the, the color of the paper, but when it prints, it prints almost like a pinkish color. So it's pretty. And then this again is printed on, um, it's a different letter. And um, it's printed on, again, newsprint. That's that. I back a lot of things with newsprint, too. And then another um, wallpaper. Um, I'm pretty sure that's either Ruby and Pearl or Graphic Fairies. I'm not sure. And... Um, here is another prayer card. It says, uh, this I know is from um, Mrs. Cog's Pink in the Garden because it's my favorite set. Of all the digitals I have, I think it's probably my favorite. And it's called Pink in the Garden. And she has a lot of different ones. She has yellow in the garden, and pink in the garden, and, and I have them all. <laughs> So, and I've had them for years. Um, she, actually, she was the first one I bought digitals from. And that was three years ago. So I just collaged it and then I put her on top because, I don't know, it just kind of looked nice. And Rose is a very, um, you know, very special to me. And so I just love roses. And she was just kneeling in the garden. It says, the Lord himself watches over me and then plenty of writing space on the back oh it looks like i sewed here and then i sewed around the whole card 
so and it's kind of squishy because I only use copy paper but when I glue I only glue my edges like that so it gives a kind of a squishy um, feeling you know and this is just a ruffle I had made so I attached it there and it's got some lace and some satin there I did it for another project and then I don't know I, I guess I didn't use it so she can slide right in here and she does stick out a little bit but I kind of like that and then this flips open and I just loved that bird. That bird's definitely from that collage from Ruby and Pearl. I took the whole collage apart. And that's how I got like all my prayer cards and things. And this just says unfailing love. And I just collaged it and put it on tea stained paper. Like that. And this um, says, my heart is confident in you, oh God. And then it's just a little, um, it's just a little writing spot matchbook. And then I put this little picture that I took a long, long time ago of a wreath on a, on a door. And I had printed a whole bunch of different things Um stamp size not stamp size wallet size I might be stamp size I don't remember but here in my little ephemera bag and that can tuck right in here and then again this is from that collage that Christmas collage of Heather's and I just put rejoice and it's an angel and that is on a piece of wallpaper and um that i collaged and a little piece of paper there and then that looks like i had put it on some um embossed tea stain paper so that's what i did there and tucked it in and then um, a friend alora had gifted me this little um prayer book so i've scanned it and um, she lives in Canada, and it's very old. It's antique, so I just printed it on copy paper, and then I folded it over, and I've got some staples here. And, um, yeah, I just kind of, you know, stained the edges a little bit to make it look older on the inside because it's just printed on copy paper. And that goes inside there and then again this is a prayer card that my friend Alora had gifted me and it just says God is love and I collaged that as well I hope I'm in frame and I hope you can see these <laughs> And I just love this. And a lot of people, a lot of people have asked about it. So I was very pleased. So that just flips out like that. I'm back in like that. And that's on newspaper print as well. And there. And then this flips out this way and this way. So some of these are digital. Some of them are mine. This is a digital. This is mine. But this one right here is a digital. And I just folded it up so it fit in there. And then I have a little envelope here. Um, and inside the envelope, I have a picture. It's a journal card that I made, and it just says his love endures forever, and it's like she's looking out into the lavender field, and it just goes on forever. So I made a Polaroid out of that, and um, backed it on two stained paper, and then I put just some writing paper scrap in there, 
And here is an ad from a newspaper that I got from Graphic Fairies. And um, it's just a piano music sheet. Somebody can write on the back. And that just goes in the envelope. And then I didn't mean to close this whole thing up. I just did by accident. But I thought, oh, I'll just stick the envelope in there. And then um, here I was too short on this piece of paper. So I just put a piece of paper up here on the top. And then here is the back, which is that... Um, embossed paper and I said it says he made us and we are his and then this is a piece of um, antique lace that I have and I put that there and then some more wallpaper from graphic fairies and then that's it and this just says continually seek him so and then it just ties up with some um satin ribbon like that so that's it that's her and I just love it and it's squishy and it's comfortable and it's nice and it's something you could throw in your purse and take to church with you and or just you know write some you know just some messages and stuff I have lots of things of Heather's that I just got a new digital kit um, that I'll be adding to this um, before it goes to its owner so that's that now how did I make it easy you take a piece of cardboard and you measure it out um, like I said, the measurements are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 by um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 by 10 is how big you want your cardboard. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your paper off. And how do you do that? Really easy. You just very lightly do this. I had started taking it off and I was like, oops, I'm supposed to be videoing this. And frame. These make great covers. I love using these because they're squishy. And they just make great covers. And they're sturdy. And then you just kind of go around and peel the paper off. You don't have to get it all off, but you want to get most of it off. Now it's not going to do it for me. It was peeling right off. I probably should have just gone down the edges and not like... Raised it. So I hope you all had a great day today. I have been busy fussy cutting. Um, for like I said, for collaboration, I'll be doing for um, Christmas in July, um, which I'm very excited about, and I. Do not know when my turn or anything is yet. Um, I just got the email yesterday thinking that it was still June and it's July. I, it's just been one thing after another with us. So, but we're much better. John's been resting. And I actually yesterday um, took a six hour nap. <laughs> so, and still was able to go to bed at a decent hour. So I think I'm just exhausted and I've had a headache pretty much all day today so but 
So you just, yeah, you just want to tear this off. And like I said, you don't have to tear it off completely. You know, just enough. So that you get most of it off. Now, what I didn't do with the one, the first one I made, because I, you know, like I said, I wasn't thinking about it. I just had the cardboard in here. And um, I had a dream that I made a journal out of it. <laughs> and I did have the cardboard in here. It was a box um, uh, from my husband cut up for me from some dog food that we have to order for our dog. She's on a special prescription diet and we order it. And um, so yeah, it's, it's a great box, but any box will do because, you know, it's just corrugated cardboard and you're just getting down to that corrugated, you know, part. So that's all you do. It comes like this and you just want to get like I said, most of the paper off so that, you know, it becomes like you'll be able to kind of feel that. Okay. Now, what I did not do, and I'm going to try this time only because I want to, I have this very, very, very light wool, a uh, lightweight felt. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me <coughs> just have a sip of water. It's very lightweight. I mean, it's very, I got it at the Dollar Tree. So for you that don't have a Dollar Tree, just a very, very lightweight felt is what you want. And what I thought I'd do before I added my paper and my fabric and my lace and, you know, what have you, is I thought maybe, because I can still feel that, you know, squishy cardboard underneath but I thought maybe I would cover it with this and that way I won't worry so much because I really did have to layer this um I had put some gesso on it first because I wanted to see the cardboard but then I didn't like the way I saw the cardboard but if you look right here where I have this lace underneath you can see the brown cardboard, which doesn't bother me at all. It, it really doesn't bother me at all. But anyway, you can see it. And um, it just, I don't know. I, I just decided that I didn't like it. So I added, you know, some wallpaper up there and, you know, paper wallpaper, not wallpaper wallpaper. Which I do have some wallpaper, but I just didn't use it. So anyway, um, so I thought what I'd do is cover this with the, um, with the felt and then just trim it off and then cover it with, you know, my papers and, and stuff. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Where am I with time? Because I did want to show something before. I... So I'm just going to cut this piece of felt. And I am going to stitch this once I get my lace on it. So, But you don't have to. So that's all. And I'm not going to cover the inside with the felt, just the outside. And that way, when you do cover it, if you cover it with like a lighter, you know, color paper, um, scrap of paper, or whatever you decide to cover it with, even fabric, um, you don't have to worry about it. I have a lot of vintage sheets and pillowcases that I like to use, and sometimes you can see through it. So, at any rate, I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac, and there will be a part two to this tomorrow. And I'm just going to go around the edge. Now, if you're not sewing it, 
I would probably do, you know, well, I guess I'll put a little bit on the inside too, just to keep those pieces of paper down as well. Um, if you're not going to sew around this, just make sure that, you know, you're, you're along your edges. I love using this. I love using it on tags. I just, I love using it. So I'm just going to place this here. And let that just dry. And I will um, decide what I'm going to use for paper. Um, eight and a half by 11 will fit fine um, on this. So you could use the same paper, you could collage it, you could, you know, do anything you wanted. So I'm just going to cut this piece up here and this here, and then I'll cut this off here. And don't worry about this being, you know, straight because you're going to let, once you get it all put together, you're going to let some pieces like this, you know, hang down or you don't have to but I mean that's what I did I think it it looked nice um with you know some and you could use you know this is like I said a vintage petticoat but or an antique petticoat piece of petticoat but it's it's like a sheet it's like a a very very thin bed sheet <laughs> or calico even very thin calico which you can just take you know, and do a running stitch and pull it and make it like that. I just tore it up because the petticoat itself was pretty damaged. I mean, it got washed and bleached and, you know, what have you, but it was pretty, pretty damaged. But my brother, he lives in Vermont and he gets me these things. And I always tell him, don't worry about the condition, just... Don't pay more than a dollar for it. <laughs> so there you go. And that's going to be your cover. And don't, you know, you want to keep this kind of rounded or, you know, like this. See how it's rounded like that. And I just used um, floss, sewing floss, embroidery floss to tie in my signatures. So, but you can use anything you want. This might end up bigger and have more pages. It's it's for my um, college roommate, the one I'm making today. So, so it'll probably be have a little bit more pages and pockets and things like that. And like I said, that was just a real quick kind of how do you do type thing, but there you go. So if you want to do a cover for any kind of journal, that's a perfect cover. It's nice and sturdy, you know, what have you. I did put um, some... Um, what did I put for tape in the middle? I can't remember. I think masking tape. Pretty sure I just put masking tape in the middle. Because you've got the cardboard. And then I did have, you know, fabric and paper. And I am going to put paper. And let me just show you a piece of 8.5 by 11. Which I'm not planning on using this. I'm just showing it to you. Although that would be pretty. This is Rach and Bella's um, Nana's Lace. That would be beautiful as the cover. So anyway, this is Rach and Bella's um, Nana's Lace. And it's very versatile and you can do so much with it. And that would be a gorgeous, gorgeous cover. 
that 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 just might end up being part of my cover. So can you see it? I may end up printing that on some calico. I'm not sure. I'll have to check and see how I feel about that. But anyway, eight and a half by eleven. And then the same thing will go, you know, any kind, anything will go on the inside. And as you can see, you'll have plenty. Okay. And that's all you do for that. I did want to take some time and show you all something that I got gifted. And I think you're all going to be like, oh, you have to be kidding me. Because... I said, you have to be kidding me. Now, I have to be very gentle with it because it is, um, it needs to be glued. But let's just make sure I'm in frame. And, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to take away these things so that all that's around is this. And I am going to put something down so that, um, We don't have this white space. Anyway, okay. Let me just bring you down a little bit. Okay. So, it's wood. And it's all inlaid here, all the way around. And it's got a cross in the middle and four other crosses. So that's it, and ah, it's so exciting. Um, my husband has to glue it. If you can see right here, it's starting, it hasn't come apart to this side yet, but it has come apart on this side. So he's just going to glue it with some wood glue and then glue it back. And um, what it is, is a um it is a um vintage um souvenir from Jerusalem and it says that on the back it says Jerusalem right here and it's um made out of olive wood and um so we don't know if it came from Jerusalem. I mean, I know that it came from Jerusalem, but what's inside, I've been able to identify some of the flowers. So the person who had this originally created what they created on the inside of this book while in Israel. And I know that because I've been able to identify some of the flowers and the leaves and where they came from. So here we go. So I opened it up. And um, here is the first page that I came to. Now, I haven't touched these yet. What the person did... I don't know if you can see that. Let me move it over. But what they did was they took this beautiful book and they pressed flowers in it. And it's so old and the flowers have been pressed for so long that the design showed up on the opposite page, which is like a tissue paper. Now these pieces I plan on putting back where they go. I just haven't done it yet, but they're all there. I mean, I've placed them there, I've filled it in, but they're not glued. They're just pressed onto this piece of paper here. So it's a very, very fragile. So that's the first page. And then here is, um, it's the, uh, let's see. 
oh, it's the, um, the view of Jaffa. So that's that. You have no excitement. I'm so excited about this. I can't even hardly stand it. <laughs> One, I am an avid gardener and I press flowers and, um, and I just love everything about Israel and Jerusalem. And I actually have a pen pal there. So she lives, um, she can see Bethlehem from her house. So can you see that? Is that not? gorgeous. It's just amazing. Oh, I have to just be very careful because I um, want to be able to place these exactly back where they were. So that's that page. I haven't researched all the flowers yet or the leaves, but I have found some olive wood and I've found olive wood leaves. These leaves I was able to identify and I can't remember right off the top of my head what they're called. Um, but they're, they're like a fern, almost like an herb. I have to write it down and put it in each page. And then over here we have the Jaffa Gate. And what would it this would be was years and years and years ago, probably in the 40s or 50s. Um, actually, I think I don't know if there's a date. Um, a person would buy something like this in Jerusalem and they would bring it home and use it like a coffee table book. But the person who owned this actually pressed flowers in it. But they didn't just press the flowers. They made these gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. And like I said, so old that you can see the print from the flowers where they pressed it on the other side. And they're all in almost perfect condition. And then this is from this, let's see. This is from the view of Jerusalem. Yeah, this is a view of Jerusalem here. And not only did it did it imprint on here, but you can see the flowers imprinted onto the pages of the book. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it went through the tissue paper onto the page. Magnificent. It's just the most magnificent artwork. And I am going to have these framed, not all of them, but a lot of them I'm going to frame, have them framed, professionally framed. Because they're just too beautiful to leave in a book. And like I said, here's all the little pieces. I haven't gotten rid of them. They're all still there. Some of the pages that have these, I've been able to pick them up, identify them, and then replace them where they went because the imprint is still, the imprint from them is still there. So it's, you know, it's not hard. It's not gonna be hard to put them back. But the, these are very old, very old. And just the most gorgeous the most gorgeous things I have ever seen in my entire life. I mean, what artwork is that? It is amazing. This is all flowers and plants. And then we have um, Mount Zion. And 
and you, this is yarrow, which comes from um, near the Sea of Galilee, and it's called yarrow. So, um, yeah, amazing work, is it not? <laughs> it's crazy. And this is, let's see. Church of the Scapular. And that is in, um, I'm not sure. I mean, someplace obviously in Jerusalem. And here's another page. This one's perfect. There's nothing missing. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's just the most gorgeous, gorgeous artwork I've ever seen in my whole life. Thank you so much, Laura. And I'm not going to take them all out, but I will frame some of them. I just really want to have some of them in my home. Um, this is Calvary. Okay, here is our telltale sign. Here's the chalice. Oops. Uh, here's the chalice right here. This is bark from the olive wood tree. And I know that for a fact because I used to work at a place in Orlando called the Holy Land. And they had some olive wood trees shipped from Jerusalem or Israel. I'm not sure where in Israel, but they had olive wood trees shipped to uh, the Holy Land, which was um, a replica of uh, the city of Jerusalem back in the day and um this is the bark from the tree from the olive wood tree so that was my first like it was done in Israel because you can't get this bark here unless you went to the holy land and that's closed and torn down <laughs> so Anyway, that is my favorite, I think, so far. It's just amazing. And that, that bark is just so, so thin. But it's bark. <laughs> so that's um, the chalice. And then, let's see. This is a church, but I'm not sure which one. I have not identified these yet. They're very unusual. But it's just the most gorgeous artwork I've ever seen in my life. Oh, there's a piece that fell off. I'll have to hunt that down with my magnifying glass and figure out where it goes because, oh, I see where it goes. Right here. So, yeah. The artist is amazing. I really would love to have met the artist. And this is Via Della Rosa, where Jesus walked um, on his way to um, the cross. And that's the Via Della Rosa. And then these are from pomegranates here. All of those are from pomegranates. Some of the little um, twigs are missing from the olive tree. So I have to kind of dig in there and see if I can find them. If not, it's fine. We still have like, you know, the image from, oops, from the little um, tiny branches. Look at that. So I haven't identified the leaves yet. But 
look at the how they took that and just it's just like a vine and they oh it's divine <laughs> you have to admit this is the most beautiful pressed flower book you ever saw in your life and then this is i'm pretty sure <sighs> let's see i don't remember and i can't see it uh, it's a mosque. It's the mosque of Omar, I believe, but don't quote me on that. But I'm pretty sure that's the mosque of Omar. And then these are a specific fern that grows only in Israel. I'm not sure where. I mean, if it's indigenous to Jerusalem or if it was, you know, I don't know. But all the pieces are there. I'm not going to try and put it together. And then we have um, the um, Oh, that's the gate. That's the gate to the city of Jerusalem right there. The city gate. It's in um, Hebrew, so, and I don't read Hebrew, but um, I recognize it in books that I have read. Some of these I'd love to have framed as well. Look at that. Star of David. Can y'all see that? That's the Star of David. Um, this is the Wailing Wall. Definitely recognize that. This is what the olive tree looks like, pretty much, when it grows. Uh, this is the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus um, prayed for God to, um, you know, take his cup from him. So that he would not die but he did and we are all safe because of that and then i'm thinking i'm not sure but i'm pretty sure that these are from a specific garden near gethsemane so i'm still researching i've not had the book very long And then this is the Mount of Olive. Again, we have the uh, pomegranate plant. The vibrant colors are just magnificent. Um, this is the Valley of uh, hmm, Josephat, I think. I'm not going to say definitely. Here again, I have to find the significance of this and the picture. So it's either the before. It's either the after picture or the before picture. Now, the chalice was definitely the after picture. So this was obviously um, near the Mount of Olive when this was made. And this is from an olive tree. And also, there's probably a significance 
to this. It's not a chalice, but there is a significance of this particular drawing, if you will. Just gonna make sure those are down there. Bethany. Now this one needs to be repaired. There's a lot of branches in there, little tiny leaves and stuff that need to be placed back in there. Rachel Slam. Just that one. Pieces are down in there for it. Christmas Day in Bethlehem. I wish I knew what year that was. I could probably get a magnifying glass and maybe be able to tell by what they're wearing. Maybe. And there's that one. And then there's this one. I haven't yet gotten to these yet to identify them yet. But this was definitely made in, not here. <laughs> it was made in Jerusalem. Ah, uh, this picture is, I think it's Jericho, but I could be wrong. This one's missing a big piece. I'm pretty sure it doesn't go like this. It goes, oops, eeks. It goes like this. You can tell I've already been playing with it, with my tweezers, actually. And then there's some pieces down there, too. This is called Gero. I think I've already told you that. <laughs> it's just magnificent. The artwork is magnificent. And it's all flowers. So someday I'll get them all identified. So press your flowers, girls. Keep pressing. And I press a lot of flowers. So. And this is, uh, I'm not sure. I think this is Tiberius, but I'm not sure. The leg of Tiberius? Where Jesus sent the uh, disciples out and said to fish. And the storm came. And that, my friends, is my gift from Alora. And she is um, Moonspell Crafts on um, Etsy. And she is now selling digitals and printed fabrics. And every once in a while, she'll put on, um, she'll have some books and things like that for sale. But this is my gift from her. So I hope you all enjoyed that. And I hope you all have a great rest of your evening. And I'll be back again tomorrow to work on our um, prayer journal. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope that you enjoyed my um, beautiful book of Jerusalem, and now my husband can have it back and glue it and then not touch it again. <laughs> be well, be safe, and God bless. Bye-bye.